this idea of adding to this play Conduct Academy, which it is already in history in this, with this orchestra, came actually from Lars Vogt, that we add two violinists. This is, of course, something completely different than piano, because, because the pianists really need to conduct if they have the tutis. A violinist can conduct with the instrument in, in, in their hands. And um, of course, uh, it's a different way of using the body, but on the other hand, it's the same. I decided to come here to the Play Conduct Academy in Paris because I think it was going to be a super involving experience that would let me grow a lot as a musician and also as a violinist and that's what is happening. From the first day until today, I think I changed a lot my vision about the pieces I brought here to play and how can I involve not only the playing, but the, the body language, the breathings, the eye contacts and, and everything I can use to the service of the musicians and to the service of the pieces that we are playing together. The playing and conducting is in some way, it's a different thing of course, because the participants have their instrument with them, but also the actual basics of conducting, which are breathing and the gesture that you actually use, are always the same, they're universal. So whether you have an instrument in your hand or just a baton in your hand, um, the actual thought behind how you show and what you show is the same. So it's been a, um, it's in a way a new dimension for me to think about how you can show with an instrument, um, but also I think for the participants it's been interesting to know some of the basics of pure conducting technique which we've been doing as well without the instrument. I decided to, to join this academy because uh, I'm very interested in how to perform with the orchestra on a very direct basis, like to, to understand like what is the contact with all the musicians but also in this academy it's uh, it's also quite, quite intense work on the conducting, which is great because uh, I feel like it's, at least me, I haven't had the chance to, to really figure it out for myself. And it's such a luxury to have uh, an amazing orchestra like the Chamber Orchestra of Paris with us that respond to every gesture that we give. <laughs> and we need to figure out how to, how to do it. But uh, every character change that we do, they do with us. and. Uh, that is, I think, is very special about this academy. I have a very special relationship with this academy because 12 years ago I was one of the participants. I have great and fond memories of Stephen Kobasevich, Heinrich Schiff, Joseph Svensson, and of course this wonderful Classe Jean de Paris. 12 years ago, it's, it's amazing, it's like a dream, but 12 years later, here we are, as a teacher, as a mentor, whatever you want to call it, but it, it is a great pleasure. And for me, at that time, was something similar to has to be for, for these guys these days. Uh, luxury, have some kind of such a wonderful group of musicians making music for you and helping you to develop these different skills of playing and conducting at the same time was very special and these days looking and enjoying this evolution of all these wonderful participants is something really rewarding and really special for me. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry guys. Don't beat all the time. Don't beat. They don't need you beating yeah. all the time. Ta, 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 ti, ti, ti. They know the rhythm. Yeah, yeah. Help them with your body language. Do something very dramatic. What I learned is that direction is a very difficult stuff. Uh, you need to have a um, very serious prepar preparation to, to be in front of a big orchestra like this with such uh, good musicians and to have uh, very clear ideas what you want in your own performance and during these days I learned uh, a lot and the uh, maestro Perianes and uh, helped me a lot and I'm very grateful for being here and for this opportunity. I think this whole experience uh, requires a lot of preparation and a lot of communication and you know that you're going to be in a very vulnerable state as a musician and as a person too. I wanted to kind of test my limits and see what I can do musically in a, you know, with, in a high pressure situation.
you know, I, I wanted to kind of really figure out what kind of musician I am. You have to force them to look a little bit more on you now, because now you show things. Yeah. And you How only, do I do you're, that? You are only happy if you get what you want. Yeah. I learned how to be more aware of the situation and to inv involve um, everyone in the orchestra. I really appreciate that someone is telling me directly, you know, and making me embarrassed and making me frustrated. I think they all learned a lot for, for their life. I hope they are all self-reflected enough to understand what they still need to learn. And uh, I hope for, the, for their future that they go on in that direction also. It's a decision if you want, if you want to do play conduct, yes or no. This week we did a lot of uh, work on, on how, to, how to conduct, how to play with the orchestra. And I think it was uh, very special tonight to find uh, a completely free contact with the orchestra. And I think this is uh, something that I will, I will continue working on for the rest of my life. I would really like to thank the musicians of the Orchestre de Chambre de Paris for being very patient with us. And I think this will, it'll, be, it'll remain a very um, memorable time for me uh, for a long time. Thank you.